Good day guys. It's Dr. Eko from SQ Tutorial. Today I'm going to be taking STP 101 Mechanics. Today we are going to be treating inertia and moment of inertia and calculating the torque on some bodies. Okay, today like I said, we are going to be treating moments moment of inertia. Now, what is moment of inertia? Moment of inertia, it plays a role in many body. And you know that it's that force that tends to like prevent a body from being in a state of rest or of uniform motion. And the formula for moment of inertia, I, is equal to m r squared. Now, moment of inertia for different bodies differs. But this is the basic formula for moment of inertia, I, is equal to what? m r squared. We're also going to be taking a look at the radius of radius of gyration. Now, before we take this as that, now you can see that in moment of inertia, we are multiplying what mass by the what mass by the square of distance. Moment of inertia depends majorly on the distribution of the mass. Moment of inertia depends majorly on these two things: the distribution of the mass and the perpendicular or distance. The distribution of the word mass and particular distance. Every other thing does not depend. Does, moment, moment of inertia does not depend on any other thing. It does not depend on angular acceleration. It does not depend on angular velocity. It does not depend on any other thing. It only depends on the distribution of the mass and the displacement or say the particular word distance. Now, what is radius of gyration? Now, radius of gyration is that perpendicular distance from the point of which if all the mass of a body was centered around that point it will still give the same value as the moment of inertia with the normal distribution of the mass so radius of gyration is that point on the body let's say we have a body a body like this it's that point on the body that is that particular distance that point on the body where is if all the mass of that body were to be focused on that point that means all the mass on that body were to be focused on that point and they were multiplied by the square of the radius of gyration, it will still give the same value as what, the moment of inertia. So this k here is called the radius of gyration. So inertia, moment of inertia is equals to m k square. So we can equate, we can say m k square is equals to m r square. So m comes to m. So for a normal body, K is equal to what? R. Now we're going to be looking at moment of inertia of other bodies. Moment of inertia of other bodies. Moment of inertia of other bodies. The first body we're going to be looking at is a ring. A ring with the axis passing through the center. A ring with the axis passing through the center. Ring with axis passing through. Passing through the center. The moment of inertia I is equal to m r square. Therefore, if the radius of gyration is also equal to if the moment of inertia with gyration is also equal to m k square, therefore k is equal to what r. This is for a ring with axis passing through the words the center. For a ring with axis passing through the words center. Now we're going to take a bar, talk, take a look at a ring with a bar its diameter. Ring about its diameter. Ring about its diameter. Radius of the or moment of inertia is equals to one over two m r square. Radius of inertia is equal to one over two m r square. Therefore, for to find the radius of gyration, we know that m k square is equals to one over two m r square. We we'll take this, take this. So k is equals to square root of r square over two. K is equals to r over what root two. So this is for a ring with um, about its diameter. The axis about its diameter. It's for a ring about its diameter. Next, we're going to take a look at a cylindrical shell about like a cylindrical shell about its own axis when. The um, when the axis is passing through the center of the cylindrical shell, cylindrical shell about its own axis, like if I have a cylinder like this, cylinder like this, I have a cylinder like this, 
Is Sinjika Shell a bat his own eyes? Sinjika Shell a bat his own eyes. His own eyes. So the moment of inertia, the moment of inertia, let's say we know for Sinjika Shell, this moment of inertia will be equal to m r square. So we can figure out the moment radius of gyration, know that m k square is equal to m r square. So k is also equal to r in this case. Now, for a cylindrical, a solid cylinder, it bats its own axis. For a solid cylinder, you know this was a cylindrical shell, but its own axis. But for a solid cylinder, solid cylinder, it bats its own axis. This was a cylindrical. Sh the one we did before was a cylindrical shell, but this will be a solid cylinder. Cylindrical shell and solid cylinder they are different. So a solid cylinder, it bats its own axis. The moment of inertia is equal to 1 over 2 m r square. I'm sure we'll be able to calculate the radius of gyration from here. Radius of gyration k is equal to r over root root 2. Now note the unit of radius of gyration is meter radius. Radius radius is a meter. So this is a solid cylinder a bat is on axis. Now for a rectangular lamina of length and breadth, a rectangular lamina of length and breadth. For a rectangular, for a rectangular lamina of length and breadth, for a rectangular lamina of length and breadth, for a rectangular lamina of length and breadth, the moment of direction, moment of inertia is equal to m over twelve open bracket l square plus or b square rectangular lamina of both length and breadth so which uh, radius of gyration will be given as m k square is equal to m over 12 square root of l square plus b square m cancel m k is equal to square root of l square plus b square all over root sorts 12 that will be the formula for the radius of gyration. Now, for a hollow cylinder, for a hollow cylinder, a hollow cylinder with two radius, a hollow cylinder with two radius, the moment of inertia for a hollow cylinder, for a hollow cylinder, for a hollow cylinder with two radius, for a hollow cylinder with two radius, the moment of inertia uh, is equals to m over 2 open bracket r1 square plus r2 square for you listening to the video so the radius of gyration mk square is equal to m over 2 open bracket r1 square plus r2 square m cancel m k is equal to square root of r1 square plus r2 square all over what root 2 this is formula for the radius of what gyration. That is for a hollow cylinder with for a hollow cylinder with two radius to be something like this. A hollow cylinder with two radius. Hollow cylinder with two radius. To now have another another one. From here to here will be R one. Then from here to here will be what R two. From here to here will be R one. From here to here will be R2. Now let's talk about a solid sphere about its diameter. For a solid sphere about its diameter. A solid sphere. A solid sphere. For a solid sphere. For a solid sphere about its diameter. For a solid sphere about its diameter. Moment of inertia I is equal to 2 over 5. M R square. Moment of inertia I is equal to 2 over 5 M R square. So moment of gyration M K square is equal to 2 over 5 M R square. So K is equal to square root of 2 over 5 R square. K is equal to R root 2 over 5. So this is for a solid sphere about its diameter. A solid sphere about its diameter. Now, for a spherical shell, and this is for a solid sphere, but for a spherical shell, but for a spherical shell, but for a spherical shell, for a spherical shell, 
for historical surely about its diameter the moment of inertia is equal to 2 over 3 m r square then the rate of duration m k square is equal to 2 over 3 m r square we can have that k is equal to r root 2 over 3 so this are uh, the formula for many bodies they are the formula for many bodies we also have for a long thin rod if you have the axis of a long thin rod passing through the center if we have a long thin rod and the axis is passing through the center we can also have the value for a long thin rod and the axis passing through the edge for a long thin rod and that is passing through the center we can have a rod like this a rod a rod and the axis will pass through the edge. The axis will pass through the edge. The axis will pass through the edge. For this one, the moment of inertia is equal to m l square over two. So the radius of gyration m k square is equal to m l square over what three. This can cancel this. So k is equal to l over root root three. But if it were to be passing through the center, this is passing through the edge. That to the edge. If it were to be passing through the center, the radius of gyration will be equals m. The moment of inertia will be equals to m l square over what twelve. M l square over twelve. Then we we'll have that the radius of gyration m k square is equals to m l square over what twelve. This will cancel this. Then k will be equals to l over what root twelve. That is equals to l over two root three. This will be the formula for passing through this the center to be the formula for passing through the edge so these are just all the formulas connecting a uh, moment of inertia of different bodies of 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 different bodies of different bodies they are more they are more than this the formulas are very 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 many if there are any formulas there were not to mention there is do it to mention it in the comment section and we treat we we'll treat it in our subsequent videos okay now we're going to look at angular momentum now angular momentum the formula for angular momentum angular momentum angular momentum now the formula for angular momentum is angular momentum is let's say angular momentum angular momentum is equal to moment of inertia times angular what velocity so this the way we also have conservation of momentum, normal momentum for Newton's law of motion, we also have conservation of angular momentum. So we can have that I1 W1 plus I2 W2 is equals to um, is equals to I1 plus I2 into W. So we can have conservation of angular momentum like this. Almost of questions you see examples of how to use the formula on angular momentum and also we also have talk we also have talk now talk 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 is equals to force times perpendicular distance what is equals to force times perpendicular words distance so torque is equal to f times what r torque is equal to what f times r so if you are saying two to calculate the torque on a body like let's say if a force let's say something like this let's say if a force a downward force at on a body like this let's say 20 newton calculate the torque at the particular distance of like Let's say five centimeter away from the body. The torque will be force times distance. So the torque will be equals to torque here will be equals to twenty times five. Or oh, don't forget to convert the centimeter into meter. Twenty times five by hundred to convert centimeter to meter. So that will be equals to. 100 over 100 so torque here will be equal to 1 newton the unit of torque is newton just like that the unit of normal force so torque is also a what a force
Now, no, movement of inertia is a scalar quantity because the direction has not yet been determined. So, the movement of inertia is a what? Is movement of inertia is relatively a scalar quantity. Now, let's look at some conservation of kinetic energy. Now, if a body if a body is rolling, if your body is rolling, if your body is rolling on the ground, the total kinetic energy is the composition of the linear kinetic energy and then the angular kinetic energy. So the total kinetic energy, total kinetic energy will be equals to one over two m v square plus one over two i w square. So this will be formula for the total what kinetic energy. Now remember that. V is equals to W arrow, W arrow, and W is equals to V over arrow. So we can substitute this for this. So we can say KT is equals to one over two MV square plus one over two I V square over what arrow what square. Now what is the formula for a moment of inertia? It depends on the body moment of inertia. Okay, let's say we're treating moment of inertia of let's say we're treating the moment of inertia of which body are we going to use okay let's say we're using a ring a ring with the axis passing through passing through the center a ring with the axis passing through the center remember for a ring with the axis passing through the center moment of inertia is equal to m r square right for a ring with its axis passing through the center moment of inertia is equal to m r square so therefore kt this should not be for a ring passing through the center or specifically for a ring passing through the center K2 because 1 over 2 mv square plus 1 over 2 open bracket m r square times v square over what? Times v square times v square over okay over r square. So if you can substitute this, we can say kt will be equals to k2 because 1 over 2 mv square plus this can relatively cancel this plus 1 over 2 m v square so kt will be equals to m v square now this will be the total kinetic energy of of total kinetic energy for your ring with as it's passing through the center okay let's say if it was to be a ring about its diameter you know the moment of inertia for a ring about its diameter. The moment of inertia for a ring about its diameter is the moment of inertia is equal to 1 over 2 m r square. So we now substitute this into this place. So we now have k2 equals to 1 over 2 m v square plus 1 over 2 1 over 2 m r square times v square over what r square. So this will cancel this. So KT will now be equal to 1 over 2 mv square plus 1 over 4 mv square. So we we'll add 1 over 2 to 1 over 4. KT will be equal to LCM of 2 and 4. LCM of 2 and 4 is 4. So it's 4 into 2 with 2. 2 plus 4 into 1, that will be 1 mv square. So that will be equal to. 3 over 4 m v square. So this will not be for a body a ring with diameter about its diameter. A ring about its diameter that is passing through its diameter. So this will be the formula for the what total kinetic energy. But the the linear kinetic energy will be 1 over 2 mv square. While the rotational kinetic energy will be 1 over 2 i w square. In case you are asked to calculate the linear kinetic energy for a body rolling. It will be 1 over 2 mv square, but if it was to, for a body, uh, like if you were asked to calculate the rotational kinetic energy, this will be it. But if you were asked to calculate the total kinetic energy, this will be it. So, these are the formulas, and these will be substituted. In our next class, we'll be treating questions on all this. We'll be treating questions on all these formulas I just dropped. Thank you. If you have any questions, please do it to say in the comment section. Thank you very much. Learning online haven't been more fun. Exquisite Online Tutorials is a household name. When it comes to academic excellence in online tutoring of 100 level students, 200 level students and college entrance examination candidates. With the power of artificial intelligence and human studies.
Exquisite online tutorials have been able to interact with the intelligence of students worldwide, making the good ones better and even the better ones best. Just like Science Bob, Exquisite Tutorials has a great faculty of erudite tutors that inject knowledge whether science or business management to the cerebrum of her students. QTME lectures and other college entrance examination lectures are going on as well. Do you still need a physical tutor? No. Exquisite Tutorials got you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter and Facebook.